Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. My name is Utsav Parekh and here are the top stories of the day. Iran has attacked what it calls Israel's spy headquarters in Iraq. Iran's Revolutionary Guards confirmed the missile strikes. At least eight explosions were heard in Erbil, the capital of Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdish region. Four people were killed and six others wounded in the strikes. Erbil's governor has described this as a terrorist attack. The strikes come amid concerns over the regional escalation of the Israel-Hamas war. Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullah has warned the United States and Britain to stop their attacks against Yemen's Houthi militants. He stressed that Iran strongly supported shipping security in the region. However, he noted that resorting to military means is not the solution to the crisis in the Red Sea. The Iranian FM also said that the United States cannot call for restraint while supporting Israel. Meanwhile, India's External Affairs Minister S. Jaishankar held talks with Amir Abdullah during his visit to Iran. Jaishankar's visit comes amid an escalating West Asian conflict and a challenging situation in the Red Sea. During the talks, Jaishankar slammed the attacks on ships near India. He called the attacks a grave concern. In December, a drone strike had caused an explosion on a chemical tanker in the Indian Ocean. The US had blamed the attack on Iran. The Yemeni Houthi movement has targeted a U.S. ship in the Gulf of Aden. According to the United States military, the vessel, the Gibraltar Eagle, reported no injuries or significant damage. This comes after the U.S. and U.K. attacked Houthi bases last week. After the attack, the Houthis warned that they would target the warships used to strike at them. Since last November, the Iran-backed Houthis have been attacking ships in the Red Sea. This is to protest Israel's war against Hamas. Support for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has dropped ever since the Israel-Hamas war began. Only 15% of Israelis want him to remain in office after the war on Hamas ends. This is according to a poll published by the research firm Israel Democracy Institute. However, Netanyahu has showed no inclination to give up his position. Meanwhile, Israel's former defense chief Benny Gantz has seen his popularity soar in the polls. Hamas has aired new videos showing what it said were the bodies of two Israeli hostages. This comes a day after Hamas warned Israel that hostages would die. The video shows another hostage reading a script. In the video, she says that her fellow hostages were killed by Israeli strikes while she was injured. Meanwhile, the Israeli military has denied the assertions. Two Palestinians carried out car ramming attacks in central Israel yesterday. They stole a car and rammed people on the street, killing one woman and injuring 12 others. The Israeli police have described the incident as a terrorist attack. The two suspects have been arrested. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has scored a decisive win in the Iowa caucuses. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished in second place. Trump's victory gives him the lead in the Republican Party candidate selection as he seeks a second term in the White House. However, the former president faces scores of criminal charges in his race against Joe Biden. Meanwhile, Vivek Ramaswamy has ended his 2024 U.S. presidential bid. He has endorsed Donald Trump for the White House. His decision comes after disappointing results in Iowa, where he finished fourth. Ramaswamy said he called Trump to congratulate him on his victory. He added that he would attend Trump's rally in New Hampshire. The Pentagon says U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was released from the hospital yesterday. They added that Austin will perform his duties remotely before returning full-time. Earlier this month, Austin and the Pentagon had been widely criticized after failing to inform the public about Austin's hospitalization. Austin had been hospitalized since January 1st. However, an official announcement was made only four days later. North Korea has scrapped several government bodies working for reunification with South Korea. 
North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has said that the unification of the two countries is no longer possible. He added that should a war break out with Seoul, Pyongyang will not avoid it. Kim has called for a constitutional amendment to change the status of South Korea to a quote-unquote hostile country. Taiwan's foreign ministry has uh, severed diplomatic ties with the island nation of Nauru. This comes after Nauru declared its intentions to seek formal ties with China. This makes Nauru Taiwan's first diplomatic ally to switch to China following Taiwan's presidential election last week. Taiwan has blamed China for Nauru's decision. Taipei says Beijing is offering the Central Pacific Island $100 million a year. About 18 million people in Sudan are in urgent need of food assistance. This is according to the Food and Agricultural Organ Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. It comes as the humanitarian situation in the country continues to deteriorate. Since the outbreak of armed conflict in Sudan last April, 10 of the country's 18 states have been caught in the conflict. It has caused more than 12,000 deaths and forced the displacement of over 7.6 million people. The U.S. is facing frigid conditions due to an Arctic air blast. The country experienced brutally cold temperatures and dangerous wind chills yesterday. Over 150 Americans were issued wind chill warnings. In some regions, the temperature dropped as low as minus 26 degrees Celsius. Over 110,000 houses in the U.S. were without electricity. Seven Green Pre Greenpeace climate activists created a snow fresco in Switzerland to protest against the World Economic Forum. The climate activist group feels that the World Economic Forum is prioritizing the economy over the environment. The activists took over 12 hours to bring the art to life with the message of life over growth. The annual meeting of the World Economic Forum is currently underway in Switzerland, Switzerland's Davos town. In northwest China, tourists stranded in the Xinjiang region were rescued via helicopter. Several avalanches occurred in the region after days of heavy snowfall. The avalanches led to the closure of large sections of highways and buried roads under snow. The Indian Meteorological Department issued an orange alert for northern India due to persistent fog and a cold wave. India's capital New Delhi recorded a temperature of 3.3 degrees Celsius yesterday. Over 460 flights were delayed and 87 cancelled in the Indian capital. Tropical cyclone Bilal hit France's Reunion Island yesterday. It battered the island with intense rains and powerful winds. Local authorities reported the death of one person. The cyclone also caused heavy flooding in Mauritius, leading to the death of one motorcyclist. Over 6,500 people were evacuated from Flores Island in Indonesia following days of volcanic activity on Mount Levotobi's Lucky Lucky Volcano. The active volcano has been spewing thick brown ash for the last few days. According to Indonesian authorities, the volcano has erupted over 40 times. According to the Icelandic Meteorological Department, the volcano that recently erupted near Grindavik town showed reduced activity yesterday. However, magma is still flowing underground. The Icelandic official said that the risk still remains high as new fissures could open without warning. On to business and tech news. Boeing is reportedly facing a fresh delay in the resumption of 737 MAX jet deliveries to China. This comes after the mid-air blowout of a panel on an Alaska Airlines plane earlier this month. In January, China Southern, China Southern Airlines was ready to receive planes from Boeing. However, reports say that it now plans to conduct more safety inspections on the aircraft. Reports say Toyota is planning to produce about 10.3 million vehicles globally this year. If the Japanese auto giant hits the target, it would mark the record for annual production at the firm for the second year in a row. This comes as a shortage of automobile, uh, automotive semiconductors and other components eases.
car maker Stellantis will temporarily lay off about 2,250 workers. This will affect workers at its Mirafiori plant in the Italian city of Turin. Over a thousand workers making the electric Fiat 500 and another thousand producing Maserati models will be impacted. The job cuts will occur from February 12th to March 3rd. The German economy contracted in 2023 due to persistent inflation and high energy prices. However, it marginally avoided a recession. Official data shows that Germany's GDP shrank 0.3% over the full year. In Nigeria, the inflation rate rose to its highest in more than 27 years in December. Official data showed that consumer inflation was up from 28.2% in November to 28.92% in December. That's the highest level since mid-1996. It also marks the 12th straight, straight monthly increase in inflation, which has exacerbated a cost-of-living crisis in Africa's largest economy. Meanwhile, Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro has said that the country's growth will reach 8% in 2024. During his address, Maduro also took a jab at Argentine President Javier Millet, calling him a fatal mistake in the history of Argentina. Maduro's growth forecast comes even as Venezuela reels with sky-high inflation. Last year, inflation was just under 190%. Spanish energy company Repsol is being sued for $1 billion. It has been sued for its alleged involvement in Peru's largest oil spill in 2022. In 2022, 10,000 barrels of oil were spilled into the Pacific Ocean. This was when the oil was being discharged onto the La Pampila refinery, which is owned by Repsol. There are growing signs that Apple is under pressure in China. Apple's Chinese website showed that it was doing discounts, which is, rare, which is a rare practice for the tech giant. The prices of some phones were cut by as much as 500 yuan, or about $70. This comes amid pressures from China's homegrown brands. Competitors, including Huawei and Xiaomi, are offering competitive deals ahead of China's Lunar New Year holidays. Meanwhile, Apple is planning to remove its blood oxygen monitoring feature from its latest smartwatches. This is to get around a US ban on the devices if an appeal fails. The plan was disclosed by Massimo Core. Massimo and Apple have been at loggerheads over patents related to the technology. Apple has been banned from selling smartwatches having the feature. However, a temporary stay on the ban has allowed Apple to resume sales. OpenAI is rolling out a series of initiatives. This is to prevent its products from being used for misinformation ahead of the US elections. The artificial intelligence startup has announced new tools. This will help users determine if an image was created by its AI software. Moving to sports, let's start with cricket. Indian legend Sachin Tendulkar's deep fake video has gone viral. The video featured Tendulkar endorsing a sports betting app. The cricketer took to social media to say that he did not feature in those videos and they were made using deep fake technology. In football, Senegal started off their Africa Cup of Nations title defence on a strong note. They beat Gambia 3-0 in yesterday's match. Senegal scored early on a goal from Pape Gouye in just the fourth minute. Then in the first half injury time, Gambia were reduced to 10 players after a nasty foul from Ebue Adams drew a red card. In the second half, Lamine Kamara scored a double to seal the win for Senegal. Argentine football legend Lionel Messi won the FIFA Player of the, uh, 2023 in the men's category. Messi beat Norwegian striker Erling Holland and French forward Kylian Mbappe to win the coveted trophy. In the women's category, Spanish forward Aitana Bonmati was voted the FIFA Player of 2023. Meanwhile, Manchester City's manager Pep Guardiola won the Best Coach Award. English Premier League clubs Everton and Nottingham Forest have been charged for breaching financial rules. 
Both clubs have allegedly broken the profit and sustainability rules in their accounts for the 2022-23 year. An independent commission has recommended a 10-point deduction for both the clubs. Now, Everton and Nottingham have 14 days to submit their formal responses. Turkey briefly detained an Israeli footballer for a social media post calling for the release of the Israeli hostages taken by Hamas. The footballer was released after police officials took his statement and forced him to delete his post. This is the second incident of an Israeli footballer being arrested in Turkey. Yesterday, another Israeli footballer was detained for having a message about the hostages on his wristband during a football match. In tennis, world number one Iga Shiontek has started her Australian Open campaign with a win. Poland Shiontek beat American Sofia Kennan 7-6, 6-2 in straight sets. She will next play in the second round of, on the 18th of January. World number 11, Kasper Ruud, also cruised into the Australian Open second round. The Norwegian dominated Spaniard Albert, Romas, uh, Albert Ramos Vinolas 6-1-6-3-6-1 in straight sets. Ruud will next be seen in action on the 18th of January. Rafael Nadal has been named the Tennis Ambassador of Saudi Arabia. The Saudi Sports Ministry will assist the Spaniard in setting up a Rafael Nadal Tennis Academy in the capital city of Riyadh. The 22-time Grand Slam champion says he's excited to promote tennis among the young generation of Saudi Arabia. The academy will be based on the coaching centers that Nadal has already established in Spain and Mexico. In American football, the Buffalo Bills beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 31-17 last night. Despite heavy snowfall, the Bills put on a spectacular show at home. Quarterback Josh Allen stole the show with one rushing and three passing touchdowns. The Bills were now, will now face the Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL Divisional Round playoff on the 22nd of January. Spanish motorcycle rider Charles Falcon has died one week after he crashed during the Dakar rally in Saudi Arabia. The 45-year-old had entered a coma after crashing during the second stage of the rally. He was immediately flown to a hospital and was resuscitated after being found without a pulse. The crash had left the racer with brain damage and multiple broken bones in the body. In the world of entertainment, the 75th annual Emmy Awards took place yesterday. Succession won the award for the top drama series, along with five other awards. The Bear also stood by Succession's side with six awards in the bag. The team of Beef took home five statuettes, which included the award for the year's best limited or anthology series. The Daily Show with Trevor Noah won the award for outstanding talk series. British singer Sir Elton John won his first Emmy Award for the best variety special live. Amerikatsi has become the first Armenian film shortlisted for the Academy Awards. The film is part, a part of the Oscars International Feature Shortlist. The story is about a man who ends up in prison for wearing a tie. The movie was shot in Armenia with local cast and crew members. The organizers of the 66th Annual Grammy Awards have revealed the list of the first round of performers for the upcoming ceremony. Participating artists include Olivia Rodrigo, Dua Lipa and Billie Eilish. The Grammy Awards will take place on the 4th of February in Los Angeles. Singer Ariana Grande has released an extended version of her latest singer, a single Yes And. The latest release has an extended instrumental intro and outro. She released the original ver version of Yes And on January 12th. Lee Song Jin, the creator of Beef, said that the series could become an anthology. Despite it being a limited series, he feels that the fate of its future is in the hands of Netflix. Beef follows the story of two individuals whose road rage accident turns into a prolonged feud. 
Actor Jenna Ortega says that the upcoming season of the hit Netflix series Wednesday is leaning into a little bit more horror. She said that after reading a few scripts, she feels that this season will have more action than the previous one. Ortega says that each episode of the new season will feel a little bit more like a movie. According to reports, the crew will start shooting Wednesday 2 in Ireland starting this April. Author R.L. Stein took to Twitter, or X, to announce an upcoming Netflix film based on one of his books. The film, titled The Prom Queen, will follow the story of his 1992 book Fear Street. The movie will soon go into production. Actor Jason Momoa has cleared the air about being homeless following his divorce. He clarified in an interview that he is houseless but not homeless. Momoa revealed that he has been using his trailer in the meantime. The Aquaman actor is now on the hunt to buy a new house for himself. The agency of South Korean actor Park Min Young stated that she didn't receive any financial help from her former boyfriend Kang Jong Hyun. This comes after a report stated that she got over $185,000 from him. According to the report, the money was labelled as living expenses. Actor Sofia Vergara spoke about navigating her life after getting a divorce from Joe Manganiello. In an interview, she said that she knew that the kind of attention her divorce would get. Vergara had anticipated that the press would invent and add things, but to her surprise, nothing happened. Sofia Vergara and Joe Mangani Manganiello split in 2023 after seven years of marriage. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post.